Hello all of my history loving friends. My name is Madame Morbid. I'm your guide on any number of historical adventures. Today I'm at Dickerson Park Zoo at the Black Bear exhibit because today I'm going to tell you the story of the real cocaine bear. Unlike in the movie is actually a victim. The real cocaine bear was a female black bear, three to four years old, about five feet high, weighing about 150 pounds. So she was about the size of an average human, weight wise anyway. Black bears in late fall are moving toward getting into their dens and hibernating. So she would have been really close to going into hibernation around the time that she stumbled ac across the cocaine. She would not have had cubs yet because they are born in the winter time. At least I hope, I hope she didn't have cubs. They do stay with their mom for about 18 months, so I guess it's possible. The black bear we're talking about lived in the Chattahoochee National Forest in Georgia near the Tennessee state line. That was a really popular area for drug traffickers to fly over because it was really remote and there wasn't a lot of law enforcement around just because of the lack of population. The pilot of the plane was named Andrew Thornton II. Now he's kind of an interesting guy because he, he could have been a good guy. He had a law degree or had at one time had a law degree. He'd been in the armed forces. He had earned a Purple Heart in 1965. He'd been in the DEA chasing guys like him. But being bad is more lucrative than going straight, I guess. And so he turned to smuggling and other nefarious activities, which lost his life, made him lose his law license. He was originally from Lexington, Kentucky and practiced law there for a short period of time. But by the time 1985 rolls around, he's smuggling drugs. He is a pilot, he's a paratrooper, which is why it's strange that he did not parachute effectively. But he did have a coke habit himself, and so maybe he was, ha he was hauling 12 bags of cocaine. Each bag weighed about 75 to 80 pounds. The bag the bear got a hold of had 40 kilos in it. Each bag was worth about $15 million, and it was more than 500 pounds of cocaine in total, which is unbelievable amount. Thornton thinks he's being followed and so he decides to ditch the airplane. There's another guy with him that I guess it sounds like was not involved or was tricked into being the co-pilot or something because he claimed to not know what was going or what was going on and that he just as Thornton started pitching everything out of the airplane he just he just did it too because he didn't really know what else to do. Thornton took each bag he and he put them in groups of three per parachute. He kept one and strapped it to his, himself. It's thought that it's possible that after he ditched the bags and then went to jump himself that he may have hit his head, possibly even knocking himself out. The thought of that is kind of crazy though because he was a trained parachute uh, paratrooper. He should have known what he was doing and not, not hit his head on the way out. But there's not a good way to explain why he didn't jump successfully. His main chute was found a half a mile away from his body. The secondary chute had deployed, but it either deployed too late to be effective or the extra weight of all that cocaine around his waist made it ineffective. The one thing was for sure there was no technical malfunction of the parachutes themselves. He landed in a Knoxville, Tennessee yard of an elderly gentleman who found him the next morning around eight or nine, called the authorities and said, there's a guy laying in my yard. I've heard driveway and I've also heard backyard. Backyard makes more sense to me. 
If it had been in his driveway, I feel like someone would have seen him sooner. He laid there for about eight hours. And he was intact, so it, the shoot slowed him down enough that he didn't just splat. They show that in the movie. And I remember wondering about that when I watched the movie about whether he would be intact after falling that far. He bailed out at around 8,000 or eight, between eight and 10,000 feet. Uh, there was no visible signs of injury according to the coroner's report. There was just some dried blood, you know, coming out the side of his mouth. But he was wearing army fatigues. He had night vision goggles. He was wearing a bulletproof vest. He had two guns on him. He had a money belt with $4,500. Uh, what else? <laughs> and Gucci loafers, which really made no sense. But they said all the equipment he had with him was state of the art, super expensive, including the parachutes. So it, it really is just astonishing that it went wrong. I do honestly wonder if he wasn't high at the time. I don't know if they did toxicology on him. But it did take him long to connect him with a North Carolina plane crash that had happened around 2 a.m. that night. Uh, he had a, the key on him that matched that Cessna and its tail number. Thornton was connected to a guy named Jimmy Chagra. Jimmy would have been the head honcho of it all. He had one of the biggest drug operations in North America at the time. His FBI file contains 65,000 pages. He was a bad dude. And he was known for putting a hit on a federal judge, the first time a federal judge is ever assassinated, named John Wood Jr. John Wood Jr. was going to oversee a big trial, lots of charges that he was facing. He was known as Maximum John, so he knew if he got convicted, he was gonna get the book thrown at him. So he hired a hitman to take out John Wood Jr. The hitman, or at least the person convicted for it, was Charles Harrelson. He is the father of actor Woody Harrelson. And Woody had some doubt about his dad's guilt, at least in that case. Now, he did do hits on possibly up to six people. He claimed 50, but other mobsters say, no, it was more like five or six at most. But there wasn't any physical evidence of this particular hit. It was all like jailbird confessions sort of ratting on uh, on him and they all got deals for that. And so that really, in my opinion, isn't a very strong case, but he did get two life sentences for it. And Woody was trying to get him a new trial, but his dad ended up dying of a heart attack in 2007. And he was not raised by his father. He only came to know him as an adult and tried to get to know him. He said he never really thought of him as a father, but more of when they were adults as someone, maybe he could develop more of a friendship kind of relationship. I'd love to tell you that Chagra paid for his crimes, but he really didn't. He died in 2008. He was 63 years old and he died of cancer. And as far as I know, he was free when that happened. I imagine the footage in the movie of the bear finding the cocaine is very accurate. I can just imagine the bear pawing at it, breaking it open and the powder just kind of in its face. And it go, oh, that smells good. And then I, I can just see its nose like trying to sniff it and maybe even like blowing, exhaling, and the powder just whew, into its face. And I can just see the powder just all over its face. And I would have loved to have seen what happens. I love in the movie when the bear first gets the high and lays down on its back and starts scooting and looking up behind it. That is so funny. And I could just really see the bear doing that. Like, oh. But unfortunately for the bear, and um, this is where the movie and reality drastically part ways. The movie bear goes on a killing spree that just annihilates people. And I hope this doesn't become one of those Jaws situations where everyone gets scared of bears and thinks they're totally bloodthirsty because this is not normal behavior for a black bear. Don't mess with bears, but don't fear them. 
unnecessarily either. I counted up, I think 12 characters in the movie are basically ripped apart by the bear. And it is kind of funny, there are, there are times in the movie where they will use the cocaine to bait the bear to get it away from a character to save someone's life. That's pretty funny. <laughs> they also have it have cubs that are also, the mom has taken the cocaine back to the den and the babies are rolling in cocaine. <laughs> it's so, it's bizarre and it's silly, but it was a fun watch. If you don't like blood and guts and you don't like horror movies, you can skip it, but it is pretty funny. Cocaine Bear would have stumbled across the cocaine in late November, so maybe sometime around Thanksgiving. And it's not really known how much she consumed, but the fatal dose was three to four grams, which if you think of a sweet and low packet, it's one of those is about a gram. So that's what all it took to kill her. It was pure cocaine, it had not been cut, and she would have died within 30 to 45 minutes of ingesting the cocaine. Well, they recovered most of the drugs. Hunter found the bear about a month after she died. So sometime in December, he called the wildlife agent. They called the police. All of the 40 packages had been busted open and were scattered everywhere. They don't know where the rest of it went. Either other animals consumed it, which I doubt because there would have been dead bodies everywhere, or a human found it and transferred the contents to some other container and took it. And they, they checked her to see what had killed her. And sure enough, the duffel was found nearby. The other duffels weren't that far from that one either. They took her to a lab in Atlanta. They did a, a necropsy and discovered that she had ingested a large amount of cocaine and the headlines in the papers were really funny. it was always the same story but they all came up with just these clever headlines back to black bears oh 90 percent of their diet is fruit vegetables plants but they do eat fish and small animals their claws do not retract. They can kill another animal with just one swipe of their paw, but they're not gonna munch on a human like they do in the movie. It's not really clear in the movie if she's actually eating the people or just having fun tearing them apart. But uh, I can tell you the amount of cocaine she consumes in that movie, she should have died in scene one, which is what actually happened in real, real life. She took a sniff and she died. The advice I'm reading here is if you actually encounter a black bear, talk to it in a calm voice, raise your arms to make yourself look bigger, give the bear an, a, a way to escape and get away from you. They are not naturally aggressive and mostly will leave you alone if you leave them alone. That's kind of what a bear den, at least here in Missouri, is like. I think the bears in Georgia and Missouri are pretty similar. You can still visit Cocaine Bear. He lives now in Lexington, Kentucky, which is the hometown of Act Two. So it's very appropriate that that's where he is, but they have him ducked out kind of ridiculously. He was taxidermied, which was unusual for some reason, whoever did the uh, necropsy decided not to not to cremate the remains, but have them taxidermied. And it floated around for a little while and finally ended up at the Fun Mall in Lexington, Kentucky. In terms of the movie, I thought it was a lot of fun. But I did leave thinking, dang, if that bear was a person, this is defamation. They didn't hurt a soul, and yet uh, in this movie they are a mass murderer. <laughs> I think it would have been much more fair if they had labeled the movie inspired by a true story, but it says based on a true story. And spoiler alert here, the story ends much more happily for the bear in this movie than it did in real life. The bear gets to basically live out its life on cocaine because at the end of the movie it says none of the cocaine bags were ever recovered, implying that the bear and its cubs lived the rest of their lives able to get high on cocaine. 
until the end of their natural lives or an accidental overdose. So do with it what you will. It's a fun movie. I recommend it if you have a dark sense of humor, like horror movies, and are not bothered by gory content. So I'll see you guys next week with more, um, more Oswald, more little more darker stuff, but you know, throwing in something fun here and there is fun for me too. So it's kind of like a palate cleanser, if you will. I'll see you guys next.